people are always talking about how good the fighting in Dragon Ball is, and for some people, it's the only reason they watch the series. But today, I want to talk about why, in my opinion, for me, fights in Dragon Ball suck. So first, why don't we talk about powers? Now, first of all, I want to quickly make it very clear that I'm not talking about how powerful characters are. I am talking about actual abilities, like the set of power people have. Like the fact that Spider-Man, in some incarnations, can shoot organic webbing, and in some he can't. That kind of power. Ability. Not strength. The first problem I have with fights in Dragon Ball is that they are boring in terms of the power in the fight. The powers or the ability. Alright? Let me add you something. What is the difference between the Gallic Gun and the Kamehameha? Or the Spirit Bomb and the Kamehameha? Or the uh, Final Flash and the Kamehameha? Uh, can you really name a distinctive difference? Yes, they're different in how powerful they are and things like that. But it's not as different as, let's say, the difference between Rastengan and Chidori in Naruto. And yet, I will be comparing Dragon Ball fights to fights in other anime. And the point is, is that I don't find it interesting to watch two people just do different colored versions of the same kind of attack at each other that are pretty much just the same thing, just one of, they're both different colors and they're both have a different amount of power backing each attack. That is boring, alright? That is not interesting. Every once in a while, and I know, don't go in the comments and say, but hit. Okay, every once in a while, you'll get somebody with an actual new cool power. Like hit being able to use the time skip or the tokutobashi. That is cool. I like that. And that is why that fight is probably the only thing in Super I can enjoy, and even that is ruined by the fact that that's the only interesting ability used in the fight. None of the other abilities in Dragon Ball are interesting to me. The Kamehameha is interesting. None of it is. It's all this boring beam, like yellow and blue beams of energy. It's lame. Now, what am I saying? What do I mean by it? What is a good power? First of all, I think one of the things that defines a good fight are having everybody have different skills, different abilities, and having to figure out ways to counter other abilities and use that ability. While I can't speak heavily on it, I know the series Hunter x Hunter does it exceptionally well, from what I remember seeing when watching it. Now, my experience with Hunter x Hunter for another video that I'll probably be doing at some point in the next couple of months. But the point is, is that I think what matters is the diversity of ability. Now, even Naruto, who people really get on for only using his Ross Tangon, at least in different versions of it, and they all are work differently, and are used in very strategic ways, and are very creative. And even then, he still has a variety of other skills. His Taijutsu skills, his stage mode, there's a variety of other things he can use in combat that are very different and look different. In fact, I've, all, I've said once or twice on the channel that I don't think One Piece has the greatest fight either. But while the reason I enjoy One Piece fight a thousand times more than I do Dragon Ball fight, is if you'll get a fight between a guy that can control string and a guy made of rubber. And you actually need to sit down and be like, okay, how the hell is this gonna work? Okay, so what could this guy made of rubber do with the rubber power? What kind of a techniques could he create? It's a lot more interesting. You really have to think while you're watching the fight. You don't know what's gonna happen. Like, who knows what kind of crazy thing Doflamingo can do with his string? Well, we obviously do, but that's beside the point. I'm looking at this from a past perspective. Who knows what kind of crazy thing Doflamingo can do with his string? Who knew in the beginning of One Piece that Luffy would be able to inflate his bones and create like a giant fit? Or speed up his blood to the point where he uh, becomes super fat because his organs are made of rubber. Nobody would have thought of that. So when they reveal these abilities and the tactical ways they can use them, it's all the more interesting. 
in One Piece when Nami fight, you get these like explanations on like how she can like you create different balls of, de of weather and like manipulate the weather with her heat balls and her cool balls, and it's very interesting. You're like, oh, I see. So she, she creates like seven cool balls. Then that heats up the atmosphere and creates storm clouds and that creates rain. And I'm like, I'm I'm learning about weather from watching this fight. I'm learning about how thunder works from watching this. This is interesting. Like, this is legitimately keeping me engaged with the strategies the characters are using. I think another great example of this is in Naruto with the way Sake Uchiha finishes off his elder brother. Utashi Uchiha, so spoiler warning for something that happened like 10 years ago, but okay. So what he does is he casts a fireball jitsu, which is pretty much just shooting a fireball, into the air because he doesn't have enough power or chakra left to, to use this jitsu he wants to use. It's a lightning technique. So he actually artificially creates lightning by using a fire technique to heat up the atmosphere, create storm cloud, and then uses a very small amount of power to manipulate the lightning in the sky to create what I think is like supposed to be a lightning dragon. I know it's based off of some Japanese folktale, but I just don't know the name. But so he's able to pull up a technique that he doesn't have enough energy to use by using a weaker technique to change the environment and use the environment to his advantage. Now besides powers, what else makes a fight? Well, I think multiple things make it. I think, in some cases, what can make a fight amazing is that it tells an actual story, and that it makes you be like, it makes you feel for the character. I don't really feel anything for Goku while he's fighting him. I'm just like, okay, this is all really flashy and look really cool. But at the end of the day, I don't feel anything. There's no connection to what's going on besides the fact that, oh, this is really cool, I wonder who's gonna win. Opposed to, let's say, Luffy and Nami versus Cracker, where Luffy is just struggling and struggling, and the whole time he's talking and screaming about how he needs to be Cracker so he can save his crewmate, his friend. While Goku and Hit are just beating each other up because the plot demands it and it will look cool and it's part of the arc, Luffy has legitimate reason to be fighting this guy and it gets you and you kind of feel something. You feel bad for the guy and you want, you want him to win, not because he's the main character and you like him, but you're like, this guy is a really good guy and he wants to save his friend. I want him to stay his friend. I don't want Sanji to die. Like, like even if you don't like the character, you're still like, they gotta win them. Like, you feel bad for them. And Luffy was getting his ass handed to him by Cracker. But him and Nami kept going at it for like an entire day. And he was like, I will get Sanji back. I will save Sanji. And I feel like that allowed us as an audience to connect to the fight and feel for the characters on a deeper level than anything I've ever felt when watching a fight in Dragon Ball. Another thing I'd like to bring up is the crucial difference between something like the Naruto vs. Sasuke fight and Goku vs. Majin Vegeta. And yes, maybe you can argue Majin Vegeta vs. Goku looked better and it's a more badass fight. But the Naruto vs. Sasuke fight, there was a story behind that fight that was much more complex, meaningful, deeper, and touched on things like politics, like philosophy, and all of that, and the fate of the world. All of that was behind that fight. All the deaths of, of all the shinobi that had died previously because of the hatred of Indra and Asura, or, or Hachirama and Madara or at this point, Naruto and Sasuke. The fight had a meaning to it. An example of this is when Goku and Vegeta fight in Dragon Ball, it's more so you want Vegeta to win because you like Vegeta, or you want Goku to win because you like Goku. But Naruto and Sasuke, let me tell you guys a story for those people who weren't there when the manga was running. Maybe I'll put some comments I find throughout the internet on screen if I can find any. But with pe even people that were not a fan of a particular character, like Naruto fans who didn't like Sasuke, had gone on record saying, 
I'm not a sake fan, but you know what? I think he's right. Naruto, Naruto's idea won't work. Naruto's philosophy will fail. Sasuke should wi winning this fight would be better for the world. I mean, like, yeah, if there were fans having philosophical discussions based on which one of these guys had the proper idea of how to lead this fictional universe. Like, they were happy, they were talking politics, they were talking the history of the universe. Which one could bring about peace? Which one had a better idea? Which one could maintain peace? I mean, so it would pretty much, it didn't come down to who you liked it more, it came down to what philosophy you agreed with more. Naruto's idealism very much about peace, friendship, living among your friends, or Sake's idea of pretty much being a, a dictator and pretty much living in the darkness, having no friends, no bonds, and pretty much telling everybody you're either going to obey me or you're going to die, and pretty much implementing mandatory world peace while sacrificing your own bonds. I mean, it was very, very interesting to see the fandom talk about this. You don't see stuff like that in Dragon Ball. And what I think makes the fight good is the amount of discussion it can generate that are related to the characters, the goals, the universe, and things of that nature. And another great example of a shonen that has incredible fight with incredible ability. And also, another thing I think is very important is strategy and making your readers think and use their brain. It's a theory that, albeit this is kind of unfair, some may argue, but it's full metal alchemist. Upon learning that Greed's armor is made of carbon, Edward proceeds to transmute the hardest carbon to the most fragile carbon there is. Alright, so he changes his density, he makes, or I guess not density, but he changes how much force it can take. And he makes it very fragile. In a Dragon Ball episode, if somebody talked about how they had really strong armor, no character would think, how could we make the armor weaker? They would just say, let's punch it really hard. Because punching things super hard is our only solution to our problem. And I think that comes down to the reason I don't like the Dragon Ball fight and I think they suck. They're just fighting for the sake of fighting. Now don't get me wrong, that is cool sometimes. But when all your fights have characters using the same kind of ability, and yes, you could argue every theory has that, but Dragon Ball, what I mean is, it's just like, it's just common, it's just energy blast. That's it. Every character has the same basic ability. They just are stylized differently. And each and every attack is stylized differently and does more or less damage. But in the end, they're all pretty much the same thing. I mean, like, but if you look at something like Naruto, it's like the Rasengan. Yes, it is powered by chakra like everything else. The Rasengan and the Fireball Jitsu are in no way similar at all. They have the same power source, but are completely different. And that makes it really interesting, because then there are questions like, if you ran the Rasengan into a Fireball, what would happen? In One Piece, you have Awakening. It's like, what would happen if Luffy awakened his fruit? Would he be able to turn the ground into rubber? If he could turn the ground and surrounding area into rubber, what would he do with that rubber? It's a very interesting concept, and with Dragon Ball, it's just, it's more so like, I wonder who's stronger. I mean, this character trained with this person and knows this, and this character did this, but it's never about, like, intelligence or things like that. It's just about who can punch the other person harder, and who is a more badass fighter, and I, I feel like it's that kind of downplay it. It's also great. To see characters fight with an incredible level of intelligence. An example, Shikamaru fight with Tamari. I don't think there is any character in Dragon Ball that is smart enough to lure a single person through a specific set of traps that would drain them of their key and lower them to a level where they could possibly be caught in a paralysis technique where they could be defeated through a whole when said paralysis technique would be sent at them through a hole in the ground created in a battle that had previously taken place. 
I don't think any Dragon Ball character could ever think of anything like that. You would never see something like that in Dragon Ball. And it just, it means it just, it really just a ton of people fighting. And when you say Goku's a fighting genius, I'm like, yeah, by Dragon Ball standards. But I mean, he's just really good at fighting. But honestly, being smart in Dragon Ball is like being intelligent in the real world. It's actually somewhat annoying. It's like some of the characters, but Dragon Ball characters that are intelligent have like 13 year olds that are smarter than them in the real world. And it's depressing. It really is. These are all like 15 year old people writing this thing. And they still be able to come up with more clever. I think doesn't make these characters seem a lot smarter than like a 13 year old boy or girl. But that's beside the point. The point is, these are the reasons I don't like Dragon Ball Fight. They all have the things I talked about in this video. But guys, this is just my opinion. Tell me, do you think the fights in Dragon Ball are good? And if so, why? Do you think they hold up against other fights that they play in anime nowadays? If so, why? And I know this is the first Dragon Ball video I've done in a while. I'm probably going to be doing about a, a couple more videos like this. Where I kind of go over why I don't like certain things in Dragon Ball. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like. Subscribe for more videos like this and other anime related videos. Make sure to check out my Saitama vs. Blank Universe series of videos. In this series of videos, I will go over whether or not Saitama can take down any universe in fiction that you recommend that I know enough about to talk about. And I mean anything. It could be something like Saitama vs. the Teen Titans from Cartoon Network. Anything. So go check that out. Um, I also did a video on the top 5 of broken abilities in One Piece. That will also be linked somewhere on screen. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. Tell me your thoughts on whether or not Dragon Ball fights are good in the comments down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day. It's One Piece Nation, signing out.